Hey, hey, um, so I wanted to share with you how we set up and manage color using the Token Studio plugin. I'm gonna go through a quick little tour of the plugin itself and then we'll dive into the nitty gritty. Um, so first we have our global set here, which houses all of our color primitives. Um, so these are our color bands based off brand guidelines we receive or create ourselves. We're typically getting colors within the 500 range um, and then creating um, light to dark shades. And this is where creating various states, um, you know, your, your hover and press states. Um, and then we have the semantic set, which this isn't totally necessary to do to have a su successful setup. Um, but if you're theming a lot or you're handing this off and you wanna make theming super easy um, with just a couple of edits rather than a bunch of edits, what you can do is set your brand color and your accent color on light and on dark. Um, and then there's state color. So we're, we're experimenting with color mixing to create our states instead of using primitives um, with the disclaimer that you need to double check accessibility if you approach it this way. Again, we're still experimenting with it, but we um, these colors are what's getting mixed with these to create those states. So if I change this to yellow, then the, you know, probably the primary interactive button will also change to yellow um, and the states will update as well. You can see here that the opacity band is also being automatically created. Um, you can see here that we have, we're pulling that uh, brand on light primary token, which is in this set and saying, hey, make this opacity 84, which is pulling a global token. So this is gonna make that purple 500 at an 84 opacity. Because you can see this is um, pointing to that global token of purple 400. I'll show this in action a little later. And then we have our, um, let me make sure that's checked. We have our light mode set and our dark mode set. And these need to match exactly. The naming needs to match um, all the way through. So that way when it swaps, it knows what it's swapping with. It's checking those names. So like foreground primary on light mode needs to be named exactly foreground primary on dark mode. Um, otherwise it won't recognize it and it will leave it into the light mode um, configuration. Um, so yeah, that's a quick tour. Um, I'll also know that sometimes I'll just, if it's a fresh project and I'm kind of starting from scratch, I'll sometimes just duplicate light mode and then rename it dark mode so I know that they match exactly. I'll make sure light mo mode is done completely and then I'll do this. And then I'll start making the adjustments on um, flipping the colors, like obviously making the foregrounds white and the inverse black for dark mode. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's like look at some of the documentation. So I will um, make these color bands here. Um, sometimes I'll use the plugin Super Palette to start with, but you can see here we had, we're starting with, with this brand color, purple 500, and I needed to tweak the rest of the um, primitives to get lighter and darker. And we found that sweet spot is, you know, kind of having that at least 800. This purple has an extra 50. Um, but what we'll do is we'll make sure we ch check contrast ratios. Um, and so on, for this documentation, we'll use the lightest color purple that can go on this purple 500. So in this case, purple 500 is the lightest color that can go on top of purple 50. Um, and then at some point you'll just end up flipping to white. Now this doesn't mean that this is how color is being used exactly within the system. Um, so you'll always still need to like double check what you land on as the final um, semantic values and usage. Um, but this gives us a head start um, in doing so. Um, but what I'll do is from here, once I create all these color bands, um, I need to get them imported into the plugin. So what I do is I'll create how I normally do them in Figma. 
So you can see, you know, like I've got the blue and then 100 to 800. Um, I'll just create them normally. And then what I'll do is I'll import them, import styles. I'll uncheck shadows and text and just do color. I'll import, I'll make sure I have the global um, set selected so they'll get imported into this set. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually delete them. So this would be base all the way down to red. I would delete them and then I would actually create styles and then just select color and then create. Um, and it will go ahead and create those. And I, that's just an extra reassurance for me that the token in the plugin is connected with the style in Figma. It should work without doing that, but I, it just makes me feel better. Um, and then when I house light and dark mode within the same file, you can see I've got light mode here um, and then dark mode. And the reason um, we can do this is because we've got um, prefix styles with, with active theme name. So if I'm editing light or dark mode, I'll have this checked. If I'm editing colors in global, since those aren't really part of a theme or set, I mean, they're pulling those values, but they're not a set on its own. And it's not a semantic palette. I need to have this unchecked when I'm editing global. So if I go to, um, you know, if, I, if I've got all my global ones here and I go to create styles, I need to make sure that box is unchecked and there's like no active theme going on. So that means this has a check check box. These don't actually need to be checked, but it's okay. Um, and then then I'll create my styles. And so when you set up like light mode and dark mode, what happens is um, I'll go and check this box, and it's gonna folder them based off a theme. So the theme is light mode and dark mode. And they are, you know, they'll f the way you name them is how they'll fold, they'll use the foldering system in Figma. But you can see if I drop this open, I got foreground, background, and border all selected. And if I open foreground, then I have more folders for each I have in here. So like foreground, you can see I've got, um, the inverse as a folder, system, accent. Uh, yeah, so I will set all these up. I'll typically just um, create these in the plugin itself and then create the styles. So what I'll, ha what I'll do is I'll enter in all the information I need and then with remember with this box checked, I'll, I'll I'm in light mode. I'm gonna create my styles. I'm gonna just select color and I'm gonna click create, and then it'll create that light mode folder. And then when I go to dark mode, you know if I flip to dark mode, I'll do that same thing: create styles, colors only selected, and then it'll create that dark mode folder. And the naming needs to match exactly. So sometimes I'll just duplicate this folder to create this folder or this set, and name it dark mode, and then I'll start just editing the color to be a dark mode theme. So that way I know it matches exactly um, because it's gonna recognize that foreground primary is getting swapped with foreground primary. Um, so it's, if you find something not swapping, it's probably because it's either the color style in, in Figma was broken in your component somehow or the naming doesn't match. You know, same with swapping components and overrides being being maintained. Um, naming is really important. Um, so yeah, and then just to show you what we're experimenting with, um, with the color mixing, so we've got this primary interactive button and you can see the token names are all brand on light primary. So this is pointing to a semantic token. This one here that we were talking about earlier, purple 500. And then you can see in light mode, let's go to the background colors. Um, that's where it's pointing to. And 
it is pointing to brand on light primary, but we're mixing it with that state color. Now I could just do darken, but this makes it a little more customized. Like it's doing the same thing in this, this situation, but sometimes you might want to mix it with a different color. That might be rare, but um, you know, I, I worked on a system where I needed to mix like a navy with more of a purple um, to achieve what was documented in the brand guidelines. So it makes it a little more custom, um, but it will darken the shade by this ratio, 0.3, so getting this darker color. So we're not actually using a primitive color here, um, but just like how we automatically made the opacity set, I'm definitely going to experiment with doing having our color primitives automatically made, but again, you just have to double check accessibility. Um, and tailor it so it is accessible. Um, but yeah, so let's let's change this color and it'll I'll show you what happens. So if I change this to blue 500, what's gonna happen here is all of these are gonna update to blue and see the the different states are still of a blue hue instead of a purple, and that's because of the color mixing that's happening. I didn't have to go into each color and say, hey, this is blue 500, this is blue 600, blue 600, blue 700. It just automatically did it. So it saves a lot of time um, not having to edit all of those individual colors for everywhere it's documented. So I'm going to turn this back to purple 500. Save. And then we'll apply to selection and update. Another thing is like, um, when you are doing this apply to selection i'm working in light mode so again that box is checked but if i were doing if i edited a um primitive color which what i usually do here is i will duplicate the row i will break the color um, looks like i already broke it here oops I'll break the color and then I will tweak it to what I need. You know, maybe it needs to be a little darker. Um, and then I'll take that um, hex code, go into global. I'll make sure this is not checked. Um, I'll edit that blue 500 color. I'll edit it and then I'll select it here where the token's applied and then I'll hit update and then it'll update the color. So again, if you're working in global, check off. If you're working within a theme, check on. And that is only if you're housing light and dark mode in the same file. It's totally acceptable to not worry about that and house light and dark mode in different files. I just prefer to because I like having a side-by-side -side comparison within the same file. Um, I need to reset this color. Um, but yeah, so that's how we are um, managing color um, within here to get more detailed on the semantic palettes for color. We have, you know, like our foreground, our inverse, we do it by, you know, interactive colors and then severity scale. Um, they're essentially all a combination that work, they all work together. Um, this is probably something um, most system designers are familiar with. Um, I'm always curious for learning new new ways of setting things up or doing things. Again, like experimenting with having primitives automatically made. So I'm curious what y'all are doing, um, how you all are managing color, if you have any um, suggestions or something you found really interesting, comment below. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks.